There we go. Good morning, everyone. Board members, are we ready? Good morning. Welcome to the February State Board of Education meeting. We have a fairly short action agenda today, and then we'll be doing a work session afterwards. We're going to go ahead and start. We have... Ms. Woods on Zoom, and the rest of the board members here. Or Mr. Henderson will be joining us later. We'll start with a moment of silence, please. Thank you. It's always fun to start our morning with a cheery face, and we're excited to welcome Mallory Stuckey, Miss Natural State Team, this morning. Um, so, um, if, if I could, thank you, Dr. Marley. I'll take a quick opportunity to introduce our spotlight. I always um, mm -hmm. am impressed with the talent and quality of the students here in the state of Arkansas. And every now and then, we get to meet paths with people that I think are extraordinary and special. And so our first spotlight that we wanted to bring today is uh, Mallory Stuckey. And I got a chance to meet her last year, and, and she's uh, taken on some of her own priorities and initiatives. And uh, today she's going to share with the board some of the work that she's working on and kind of like a partnership that we have with the Department of Education to help promote this exciting topic. And so um, uh, Mallory is a sophomore at Ryzen. High school, and we'd like to invite her to the podium to share a little bit about what her special project is. So come on up. Good morning. My name is Mallory Stuckey, and I'm a sophomore at Ryzen High School. I'm Miss Natural States Teen. As part of the Miss Arkansas Teen Scholarship Organization, my community service initiative is to raise awareness in Arkansas about sun safety and skin cancer. My goal for this year, with your help, is to encourage all 237 schools in Arkansas to participate in Sun Safety Week. With one in five Americans developing skin cancer in their lifetime, education about sun safety toward, is a vital step toward reducing risk and enjoying the outdoors safely. Children are a serious concern because unprotected exposure to the sun during youth puts them at an increased risk for skin cancer. In fact, just one blistering sunburn in childhood, more than doubles your chances of developing melanoma later in life. The good news is that UV-related health effects are largely preventable by implementing sun protection practices early and consistently. Educators can play a major role in protecting children by teaching and modeling sun-safe behaviors. School-based programs on sun safety are an effective way to teach children at an early age how to protect themselves and help decrease their risk of developing skin cancer as adults. The past two years, I have submitted and approved proclamations declaring May as Skin Cancer Awareness Month in Arkansas, but I knew I wanted to do more, encouraging sun safety awareness in schools. Last year, I met with Commissioner Oliva about the idea of Sun Safety Week. My school, Cleveland County School District, agreed to pilot it last year. It was a huge success. I created daily themes to get the students involved, we shared a skin cancer statistic each day to educate students, and I shared activities for elementary teachers to do with their students. The students not only enjoyed this week, but they learned so much. With your help, I want to encourage all schools in Arkansas to recognize Sun Safety Week. I would like to do this on the first full week of May, which will be May 6th through 10th, 2024. I have created a flyer with daily themes for students to participate in. I've also created QR codes for students to scan, which will lead them to a skin cancer statistic. For elementary students, I have created a coloring book. I created an activity booklet, and I would love for, to share this with the teachers for the classrooms to participate in. The CDC already has guidelines for school programs to prevent skin cancer. Sun Safety Week will help schools implement those guidelines. 
The urgent need for action is supported by alarming statistics. This year, there will be more new cases of skin cancer than all other types of cancer combined. Please help me reach all schools in Arkansas and encourage the participation of Sun Safety Week in 2024. Thank you so much for, for sharing with coming to us today. That's such an important platform that you have. And really neat to see the materials that you've already created as you think about it with your school and other schools across the state. Thank you for allowing me to come. So, I, and I don't know if board members may have some questions for Mallory, but I, but I think overall we, we just want to get a, a feeling from the board. Is this an initiative we think we should stand behind and help support and implement? Questions, board members, or any comments? So, no questions, but just a huge round of applause again for you. You are a remarkable young woman, and um, I can't wait to see what you do next. I, I want to go put on some sunscreen right now. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to come share with us today. We're going to get a picture with you, okay. if you don't Dr. mind. Moore, would it be appropriate for us to maybe have a proclamation or something at an upcoming board meeting to kind of yeah. whatever, uh, formalize the request she's made for um, for the Sun Safety Week? Yes. Yeah. We can do so. Very so good. we'll be in touch on that. some homework. So <laughs> yeah. we, wouldn't be, we wouldn't be education if we didn't give you homework. So. <laughs> Awesome. Well, we'll work with you on that okay. proclamation. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. It's always good to, to hear from students. We have a lot of incredible students across the state. We will move on to our action agenda. Is there any, are there any changes to the agenda first? I don't believe so. I gotta check. Okay. So action agenda, item one, we have a standards for accreditation request from the Alpena School District. Good morning. Hope Barsh, I'm Assistant Commissioner of Public School Accountability. We do have one waiver request today for class size. It's a standard one A.5. Uh, the Alpena School District, when I spoke to them, they were at, uh, they were actually requesting one less student over. They had a student move out, um, but they are requesting the waiver for the remainder of the year. When I did speak to them, they do have support in the classroom for the teacher. The teacher was actually advocating for keeping uh, the 30 students in her classroom, which is uh, two over what is uh, in the standards for accreditation for that class um, size. 
and they actually <laughs> rotate students. There's other teachers that help um, in the classroom. I believe um, Mr. Smith may be on. He was invited today, and if you have a, additional questions. I see, Mr. Smith, you're on Zoom today? Yes, we are. Thank you for joining us. D did you all want to make any comments? Um, we would just like to say we did, um, I'm the classroom teacher as well, the sixth grade teacher, and we ha I had a waiver last year because I had 30 students, and we had hired a teacher at the end of last year, the school year, to be my partner. However, a week before school started, um, we were aware of something that would potentially cause an issue for us, so she had to resign that Friday before school started on Tuesday. And so we had a lot of conversations about what we felt best um, would be best for our, these students going forward. And we didn't feel that hiring a teacher at that point in the year would be the best option for them. And so that's the reason why we chose to ask for the waiver for this year to keep them all together in my classroom. Thank you. What is your name? Sarah Curry. Thank you, Ms. Curry. We appreciate you sharing that today. I appreciate the work you're doing in sixth grade. Board members, questions, Ms. Rollins? Reading through the materials, it sounded like these students were also in a rotating group. Yes, so I teach um, fourth grade and sixth grade literacy, so I'm their literacy teacher, and then they go to a math teacher um, for part of the day, and then they go to a science social studies teacher for another part of the day. So they actually have three of us as teachers. Okay, and you feel well supported in the classroom as well as the other teachers that have this group of students? Yes, we all do, and two of us have had these students previously, and so they're very comfortable with us and us with them, and we're all veteran teachers, and so we feel very confident in our ability to continue this through the rest of the year. Okay, thank you. And more questions, Ms. Kinney? Yeah, just a quick question. Um, this is a waiver for the remainder of the year. That is correct. It would expire, what's the? Uh, June 30th. Okay, yes, thanks. Yeah. Yes, that's correct. More questions? Questions? Ms. Woods, any questions? With that, then, if there's no more questions or comments, the floor is open for a motion. I'll make the motion that we support this waiver request. A motion by Ms. Rollins to support the waiver request. Is there a second? A second by Ms. Hunter. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you all for joining yeah. us on Zoom today. <coughs> Up next, we have two sets of rules. The first is the rules governing payments under the Education Freedom Account Program. Good morning, Chair and members of the board. We do have two rules before you. The first are the permanent DESI rules governing payments under the EFA accounts. This is not the full rule. This is simply to process payments uh, on a permanent basis. We did receive some public comments, but none of them were substantive, and we did make a few changes to sections 1.01.1, 1.01.1.4, and then 0.5. Again, none of them changed the spirit of the rule or any actual substantive language or operative language. It was simply to include, include participating school or service provider to be consistent. Board members, questions? To my left, Ms. Rollins. Questions, Mr. Brad, no. Ms. Salon. Ms. Woods, questions? Okay. I do want to ask, so this, you just said, is this going, is there going to eventually be a rule for the Education Freedom Accounts Program and this will be a subsection of that, is that correct? Correct, this language will eventually be included in the permanent rules as well. We did receive public comment on those rules and we're gonna put it out for a second round of public comment. We're finalizing changes currently. We're not done yet, but. Okay, but this one needed to be prioritized. Correct, it was to continue making payments, correct. Okay. okay, that's helpful. Any more questions, board members? Okay, the floor is open for a motion then. Second. A motion by Mr. Wood, a second by Mr. Bragg. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Chair. The next rule on your agenda are the tutoring grant rules. These are the permanent rules. Uh, we're operating currently under the emergency rules. Uh, I know that we sent a press release on Jan January 30th. Um, 
We did receive some public comments on this rule. Again, none of them are substantive. Effectively, most of them were to add that word section in front of a section number. Um, and then to make sure that parenthetical numbers were right after the long hand. So for example, 30, you would write down 30 parentheses, the number 30, and move on. Um, that was effectively all the comments that we received. Um, and move for any questions. Board members, questions to my left, Ms. Rollins, in the center. Yes. I understand that families can apply to tutor outside of the classroom, outside of the school. How do we help those parents apply for these grants when they may not have access to the internet to do it themselves? Do they get help from the schools to apply? I don't know if we have anybody that's been communicating with schools. We can help out with that question. Um, again, I'm <clears throat> Good morning, Courtney Salas Ford. Um, so the school districts where those students are are notified and they can also reach out and assist the parents in accessing that information. The parents can come to the school and use their computers, although I don't believe everything is electronic, but the, the school district is working very closely with the parents of the identified students to make sure that they can access that. So a computer is not necessary. Okay. Additionally, we created what's called a DigiLocker for the school districts to go down and then they can download personalized letters to each of the families that they can send home with the students mm -hmm. to go directly to the families as well. So part, part of part of this process is, is, is a great point, is, is getting the rules and everything across the finish line, because we had the emergency rules that allowed us to start it. We're codifying um, a new program now, but how we work with districts to bring in awareness is kind of a next big step, and there's gotta, it's gotta be a, a multitude of different factors. Yeah. Let me add one more thing. Um, not Stacy Smith, um, not every vendor on the list is digital or computer-based. You could have a tutoring core veteran teacher who is local that is providing in-person tutoring. So not everyone is, is not every one of the vendors is digital. Okay, some are, but some are not. So that again would go into um, the decision by the parent about what they're going to select. That's right. Okay. Why are you here, Stacey? I have another question, if you don't mind. Uh, or, but I'll let other board members know. Ms. Hunter, Ms. Keeley. Well, is there, is it a rolling application for vendors? Is there a cap on how many? Um, or, or is it like needs to be approved by August? You know, I didn't see Yeah, so comments. earlier this year we put out, an, a, from the Department of Ed, we put out a, a, a call for proposals from tutoring vendors where they had to submit their application. And then that was vetted by, um, it was led by Missy Wally and, a t and her team. And they went through and reviewed all the different vendors and their, what, what their status, what, were they aligned to the science of reading? What did they have to offer? And then there is a spreadsheet made that has everything listed on it. The vendors who are on for the $500 have to be aligned to the science of reading, and their primary focus is K through three. The high impact tutoring was broader. It's K-12, multiple subjects. And so you will see different vendors on the, the literacy list and then the high impact list. On the literacy list, when I, when I glanced at it, I thought, I hope we can get more. So can people continue to apply or does that stop at this point? In the no, I believe it's actually still open. We're still, yeah, it's still open. Okay. We're still, still um, accepting applications for that. Okay, great, thanks. As far as, Susie, as far as the identification of students, it's not based on the end of year assessment, is it? I know that they put it into quartiles. So this last year, we, we last year we pulled, um, to identify kids for this year, we did start by pulling data from last year's um, summative for students that were in kindergarten through second grade um, to help us identify the lowest quartile piece. And that's how, that's how we started. And then we actually have data from this year as well that has gone into okay, that. Okay, so they're, because as a kindergartners, they're interim assessments. Yes, yeah, so we had to, wanna, we, yeah, we yeah. had to go back and then for current kindergartners use that. Yeah, because I don't, and I know our assessment results for this year won't get back till later, so more real-time information so that we're not waiting for the results to come back. Correct, and once we get our K-3 screener in place, which will be early next year, the requirement for screening early in the year, that will be a tool that's used for kindergarten early on. And then can you remind me, 
remind me the high impact tutoring grants are those ones done by the school? Yes, those okay, are. And these are external providers. Mm -hmm. But you, in this set of rules, you have both of those grants in there. Mm -hmm. So the high impact tutoring grants, most of those have partnered with a vendor to provide high, high dosage tutoring during the school day. So you'll see, and you'll see some that are doing their own programs, but most of them have done a partnership. are figured on an annual basis? And it's based on allocation of funding availability. Okay, and then who decides, who decides that? The, state the legislature. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so that can be variable over the year. Okay. Good question. Uh, upon final review of ALC, does this go into effect immediately or is it for next year? So there were emergency rules, if you want to talk about that. Correct, so we have emergency rules. Again, none of the changes were substantive. So effectively, the rules are more or less the same. Um, we have authorization, I think, for probably another three months because we got them approved last month. Um, and then as soon as they go, these go into effect 10 days after review of ALC um, and submission to the Secretary of State's office and State Library, we would be operating under the permanent rules and no longer the emergency rules. Okay, thank you. I think one more just in thinking about, I know we talked about it last month, but the high impact tutoring grants is there going to be any sort of monitoring or, or is the data coming out around it? Yeah, so the, the, the legislation actually outlines specific data reports that are due to the department. Um, it even outlines if a um, vendor cannot show that their students are making progress, that they can be removed from the list. And so there are reports that are actually due to the legislature and to the department based on the progress of the different vendors. I'd be curious if if there'd be a conversation later on to, to move those high impact tutoring grants to be after school grants or summer grants as opposed to in-day instruction? So it's really based upon what um, best practices around high dosage tutoring and what the national definition is. There's actually been research for a while about effective tutoring and what that is. A lot of, and I mean, it goes all the way back even to like the, the odin Picus adequacy studies for, for the department. You'll see tutoring put in there. But the research around high dosage is about during the school day and about being a certified teacher, um, the curriculum alignment piece, um, kind of that point in time need for tutoring versus extended time. We did allow in our high impact tutoring grants districts to tell us beyond what they're doing during the school day, how can they extend it and how could they go into the summer. So we have tried to provide that flexibility, but we're still trying to hold tight to what do we know research says about outcomes. I totally understand that, but also know logistically it's hard to, to provide that for students with that and not have them miss core instruction or supplemental instruction that's important as well. I would agree with you. Is there any priority given to a D or F school district? The it's, high it's, impact tutoring grants are competitive. So they, are, they submit and then when we're looking at how we are determining who gets the grants, there are those considerations in fact, they're factored in. Ms. Woods, do you have any questions? Other questions or comments from board members? I think it would be great, and we can talk about the work session. This would be something that in, a, in six months to a year, giving an update on what we're seeing in schools and how this is going and getting some assessment. We're, we're required to provide a report okay. annually as well. We can, we, we actually have, so we have these rules that are going in place around the high dosage uh, tutoring, but we also, um, earlier this year, to help support LEARN's implementation, because a lot of this is, is really about how we're targeting literacy in the state aligned with LEARN's to make sure we're supporting students with access to high quality teachers, high quality instruction, and getting intervention timely. We, we applied for a competitive grant um, for a few districts to participate in high dosage tutoring as well. And we, we were successful in achieving and reaching that grant. It was, a, it was a million dollar grant that we brought in to the state above and beyond what we, we've gotten from um, the legislature to support. So we actually have uh, on the 20th, and we can send the board information, um, a showcase where we're gonna spotlight some of the high dosage tutoring in action that's happening in, in the Jacksonville schools. Yeah, so um, Jack would be interested in attending. Questions, comments, board members? 
floor will be open for a motion then on the tutoring rules governing the tutoring grants. I move we accept the rules. There's a motion to accept. Is there a second? I'll second. Motion by Mr. Bragg, second by Ms. Rollins. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Chair, Thank you members of the board. Moving on, is there, it's the end of our action agenda, short action agenda. Is there any new business? Can I bring up uh, one item? We, we had a, a great meeting with some of the, the board members on the workshop yesterday to start digging into persistent and low performing schools, pulling a lot of data, looking at what school districts are required to submit for different dollar grant applications, if they're in a turnaround status, what, 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 is, what, what are we doing? What are we unpacking? How are we supporting schools? So at the end of that meeting, uh, there was a desire, and I'll, I can let Mr. Wood jump in here, to possibly reconvene that work group within a couple weeks. So we were looking about the third week of February, because we're going to pull some additional reports and data to bring back to the work group to help kind of keep this conversation moving. And um, which is great. My ask is that if we kind of reconvene the, the work group, since it has a pretty good number of members, um, if you remember, we, we're starting to get to the point where we're going to be bringing to, to the board a lot of rules, and, and we're going to take advantage of every opportunity that we have when the board meets. I'd actually like to make it a quick little business meeting as well to look at some waiver requests we've received on calendar and school start dates, and then um, share with the board a rule around the adult high school diploma that we're going to try to get back to the legislature so we can get that program moving forward for next school year. So our, our ask, I guess, is as we're looking for a time for the work group to meet, uh, if we did a, a quick meeting as well, since uh, a good number of the members of the board are on that. Um, we were looking at the afternoon of the 21st, um, which is a Wednesday, and I'd just like to see if that would work, because then we can just start kind of nailing the, the calendar time down as well uh, for that. So I, I just want to Anyone check your calendar and have any immediate concerns? Would there uh, be the option to join by phone or? We can do that, yeah. Right. Yes, for the business part um, of the meeting. Miss Woods, were you able to hear all that? Yes. Thank you. Great, then we'll go ahead and move forward with the 21st. Yeah, I'll work with that works. Ms. Perry. Thank you. I'm, you, I'm flexible. If one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, whatever is the consensus of the board, we, we can make it work. Later, the better. For me. Is that Eight o'clock at night. No. <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> you three. Three o'clock. I'm, I'm okay with that, that if that works. Yeah. Do the business meeting at three and then mm -hmm. work session after. Oh, is that, that would put y'all later. Yeah. Could we do two thirty? Yeah, how long do you see I, I don't think it'll be that long. Okay. Yeah. Because we would we would limit it to those to those long. items for calendars, because schools are planning for next year, and the rule on the adult plan we wouldn't have any other business aside. We just so I think we can keep it pretty focused. Okay. Yeah. That work we're getting for the two thirty. Yeah, that's right. Thank you. We'll start. Yeah. Accountability about three. Two thirty. Great. Then we'll move on to consent agenda. Does board members have any items you would like to discuss or pull? Ms. Woods, are any items you'd like to discuss or pull? Mr. Brad, Mr. Allen's to my left, anyone? Okay, with that, the floor will be open for a motion on the consent agenda. Thank you, Mr. Bragg. A motion to accept the consent agenda. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Hunter. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Great. We're going to move on to reports, but let's take just a quick break to let Miranda, if you want to pack up your stuff, because I think I held you captive last time. Are you sure? <laughs> okay, okay. 
<laughs> I, think we, I think we went over, because I guess you're just required to do the, the action and consent. But thank you. Great, then we will move on to Lee County School District. And we have Ms. Whitlow here, and Mr. Stone, thank you for driving in this morning. He was upstairs on a Zoom, so he was coming down in a hurry, so he can do it a minute. But Sheila Whitlow, and I'm here to introduce um, Dr. Michael Stone, who has, uh, he's in his second year at Lee County School District, and he's going to give you an update on the status of the, of the district, and he knows that he has 10 minutes. So. <laughs> and we've been really efficient this morning, so we're good. Thank you for coming in. Good morning, uh, board members, Secretary Alipa. Uh, all that support the Lee County School District. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to come out today and just um, share a little bit about what's happening happening in Lee County Schools. Let me go ahead and get started with the next slide, please. I've got a few slides. I think there's only one slide or one link that we'll go into just to kind of give you. I think I see that. Appreciate that. Uh, just a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a native of Mariana, Arkansas, uh, born and raised. Uh, I went to Lee High School and graduated. Uh, from there, I went to Hardin University in Searcy uh, and finished uh, my master's, my elementary ed, and then master's in administration. I went to the University of Central Arkansas where I received my specialist degree, and then Arkansas Tech University, I received my doctoral degree. Um, in my career, I was a teacher. Uh, I was a, an assistant principal, principal, director of federal programs, and executive director of student services, uh, all in the North Little Rock School District. And from there, now I'm the humble superintendent of the Lee County School District. Some of the community involvements that I have, uh, I'm, I'm a part of the Rotary Club, uh, NAACP, and uh, I've got partnership and relationship with every single uh, bullet on this board here. One notable one, uh, the Lee, Lee Academy Cougars. Uh, we, we've uh, got a great relationship within the community. We both believe that it's a community problem that we're having, and so we're, we're looking forward to attacking that together. Uh, the, the district is in fiscal distress. Uh, so one of the reasons that uh, state take over fiscal distress, academic distress, and so what, what I've gone in in the last couple of years, we've put in place financial procedures. We have a procedure, um, and I've got a link there. I'm not sure if you all have an uh, opportunity to look at that link, but it outlines and details every single thing that we do within the district as it relates to our fiscal, fiscal procedures. And so um, we... We've taught our financial uh, people within our offices how to navigate these, this system. We've taught every member in or staff in our district what the expectations are, and we constantly remind them uh, throughout the year. And you, this year we started with a, um, we did a um, carousel uh, where one of our, our programs was the financial procedures, just to remind them this, this is how we work and this is how we're gonna deal with things within the district as it relates to fiscal services. We are uh, being supported currently by APSRC. Uh, APSRC is uh, gradually releasing over to my bookkeeper some of the things that, that, that's gonna be able, where we can move forward as a district on our own. Uh, we will not uh, move without some kind of services and we also work with fiscal services and they are very helpful in, in what we're doing in our processes. We've had two clean audits. Uh, actually, the dishes had three clean audits. Uh, there was a clean audit as I came in, and now we've had two clean audits since I've been there as well. Looking forward to uh, continuing to work with fiscal services after this year, but looking forward to also being released from fiscal distress. I want to uh, maybe slow down here. Um, and talk about what, what our academic needs are and, and how we're addressing those problems that we see within our community. Uh, one of the things that we're doing with our pre-K, we do pre-K uh, RISE. Uh, Lunchpad is the program that's, that's used there. We found that the 
Uh, once our kids are going through that program and go into our kindergarten, uh, kindergarten classes, they are stronger uh, than the kids that we're getting from everywhere else that comes into our kindergarten program. So we are, we are using that program with fidelity and now we're reaching out to the community as well. We've got plans to all the daycares and facilities that are dealing with whether they come to the Lee County School District or not, we're gonna meet with them and, and, and help them work through the tools that we're using uh, so that if they do decide to come to Lee County, uh, they, they've got a hit start on some things. Also, we've become the uh, official affiliate for the Dolly Parton Imagination Library where we're trying to flood our community with books. Uh, we, we launched this uh, a week and a half ago uh, and I've had over 70 responses uh, to date and we've signed, up, we've signed up about 38 to 40 uh, that, that qualified to be in the program. So it's, it's making an impact that the, the families are wanting the books and, and we're getting them to them uh, as, as they sign up with our uh, system. Now, I think pre-K is important. Uh, this is one of the most important things is, uh, I call it a marathon instead of a sprint. We have, to, we have to get into the homes as quick as we can as a school district so that we can influence the literacy skills before they come to us. So that's why we're, we're, we're doing those type things and we've got a meeting set on the 12th for those uh, daycares and, and all that will come in uh, to, to support them with what we're doing in the schools to try to get a head start on the kids that, that are in their care as well. Now I don't know how to click into this link uh, from here. Can you help me with that? <laughs> okay. A couple of things uh, coming into what's exciting going on at Anna Strong. Uh, we, we've had a, a new commitment. It's called Level Up. Uh, we we want to level up. So if you go through the school, uh, once you go through the school, you'll see all kind of gaming things, and the kids are excited about that. I, I, I don't play a lot of games, so but but I know that there's a search term as level up, and they understand what that means uh, to level up to the next level. And so when we're doing our ready, and and when we're doing our, our state testing, they understand that we want them to level up, and and that's going not only in Anna Strong but going into the high school as well. One of our uh, notable things that happened this this December, uh, we had a whole class uh, publish a book. And it was exciting. They had a book signing. The kids were thrilled about that. Uh, just, just to, uh, uh, they were just so excited about how, how that whole process worked. But we used that process to to teach them. You know, they, there's some work to to do when go into creating a book. So uh, that was an exciting thing as well. See, we're on the next slide. Uh, could we not get into that link? Okay, so in that, in that link that, um, that I was getting ready to show you, what, what that link shows is our iReady data uh, at Anna Strong. And that data is showing that we, are eight, we, are, we were eight uh, to 10% from the beginning of the year assessment to the middle of the year assessment in every area. Uh, they've grown. Uh, at the high school, the same thing has happened. Uh, at the high school, more so with the math, you're looking at six to eight percent increase uh, for iReady for all areas uh, of the math, but in the ELA department, it's only about a two percent. So we, when I meet with my uh, academic uh, team, uh, we determine that the ELA department at the high school is our struggle. And so we've, we're putting things in place to, to make sure that, that we increased there. Now, we did see an increase, 2% increase from the beginning to the, the mid, but that's not enough for us. That's, we, we're not satisfied with that. So some of the things that we're putting in place, we, we, have a, we, we are a PLC community there. Um, we have academic coaches that are supporting our teachers. TNTP is coming in and they're teaching our te teachers internalization of lesson lessons and also we're using their lesson plans. Uh, we got Envision Math, uh, that is 
the math is stronger, but we still have a, a set program for, for math as well. Our HQMI is, is we're using it with fidelity as, as it relates to having it out and use the material. Again, ELA is our problem area, so we're, we're doing a lot more work with them to make sure that we are, are doing what need, we need to do with ELA for our seventh through 12th grade students. Uh, some of the things that uh, we are proud about are our RTI teams. We have, I, I would say, one of the best RTI teams uh, in the state uh, where uh, we focus on behavior and academic. Uh, that team meets all the time, uh, except through one this, this, this week, uh, the academic one, and we are looking at data. We're trying to, uh, this, this week we're looking at our seniors. We're trying to get them ready for graduation. So we're looking at that data. We're determining what the kids are needing and then we're, we're putting a plan together to, to solve that issue that we see. So, and the same thing with behavior, if there's a behavior thing, we're contacting, we're reaching out to parents, attendance uh, things. We are doing a, a really good job with those RTI teams. Uh, another thing that we're excited about, Gear Up uh, had a, this past week uh, from UCA. Uh, we've partnered with Gear Up and they've all, of our seventh grade students received a, a, a scholarship for college right now. And, and they, they have a $30 million something that they're dealing with that we're partnering with them on. And, and we are uh, proud to say that our seventh graders already have a $1,500 scholarship if they, as they exit high school from the Lee County School District. We are working on ACT prep. We got a vendor in there with, with the Windward Academy, and we had all of our kids tested. Some of the scores, it was a mock testing. Uh, they used the actual ACT prep information to test them, and we had students score 33. We had a couple students score 31, 28, 27, 26, a couple students. Uh, they are doing a fantastic job picking up students, and some of these students are eighth grade. So we, we are really getting down into helping our students uh, you know, realize that they are, uh, that they can expect to score high uh, on the ACT as well. Okay, I'll finish with facilities. Uh, a couple of things that we got going in the Lee County School District. Uh, right now, dirt work is happening for our teacher housing. Uh, we, we, know, we know that uh, one of the most impactful thing in the schools for students is qualified teachers. And in our area, in the Delta, it, it's hard to recruit and retain teachers. So being able to utilize those ESSER dollars in a unique way uh, to create uh, teacher housing for ret retention and recruitment, that's what we're trying to do. So we're gonna, we're gonna uh, be complete with this project mid, the time frame is mid July, June, July and we should be able to utilize, I'll have at least two of them done by July 1. So we'll be able to use that as a teacher recruitment and retention uh, tool. And then we are in the midst of, we're really busy around there. Uh, March 5th is the date for, we're, we're uh, asking the community for a 9.6 millage increase. Now that's a, that's a huge number, but being the lowest millage in the state of Arkansas at 28.3 mils, uh, that's not a huge ask. Uh, the community I've had uh, in the neighborhood of 15 meetings so far that my committee sent me out to do, and I've got about seven more to do uh, before, that I know of before uh, March 4th. So um, uh, we're, we're very busy, and, and right now the community support is positive. So. Uh, we're going to uh, go ahead and claim that we're going to pass this millage, and in a couple of years, we'll have a brand new K-12 Lee County School District in Mariana, Arkansas. Did I meet my 10 minutes? <laughs> you don't know how many times I rehearsed that. <laughs> uh, questions? Thank you so much for coming in today. We appreciate it. It's a positive updates and good to hear the growth in students. Uh, go board members to my left. Questions, Ms. Rollins? Ms. Hunter? So, what do you identify as the potential reasons for the only 2% growth or increase in literacy in the majority of schools? 
Okay, so uh, I, we've identified, we talked about this as a team. Uh, low expectation is one of those, uh, one of those things, and unprepared teachers. Uh, and so that's why we have the uh, TNTP coming in and, and helping. What is that? TNTP? Uh, that's the, um, that's the provider that we use uh, for literacy. It's the new the teacher state. project is the name of the company. It's the it's new it. teacher project. Is thank you. I, I, thank you for that. I, TNDP is all I know of, man. I didn't ask what that was. But, but yes, that's two of the things. Unprepared teachers and, and low expectation would be two of the uh, reasons. How, how does low expectations make that big of an impact? Well, uh, if, if you're a teacher in, the, in, the, uh, in front of a student and you don't expect them to to rise to the, the level, uh, the standard that the state has set, and you have been in a culture or an environment that has, I want to be careful with what I say, but been in a culture and environment that's, that's consistently said that our kids can't do it, then, then you're not going to teach up to that level. And so that low expectation there uh, makes it uh, relevant to why our kids are, are scoring low, or uh, poorly performing. And I can add to that, if, yes, sir. if that's okay. So when, when you look at kind of literacy across a, a spectrum, and you look at what's happening in those foundational years, so Dr. Stone talks about the progress monitoring data, they're seeing gains when students are being uh, explicitly systematically taught the science of reading components. So when you're getting explicit instruction in phonics and phonemic awareness, that's what builds out fluency, vocabulary, and leads to comprehension. When you look at what happens in earlier grades around literacy as you get into middle school and into high school, you get more into text and text complexity. And so that systematic instruction around phonics isn't as prevalent because those foundational years, we say students are learning how to read, now they're reading to learn. So when you start seeing expectations at a high school, you'll have standards that'll say, you know, read a selected passage, identify uh, author's main idea and purpose. Well, if you don't believe that your students can handle complex text, the text that you're teaching to accommodate that standard matters. Because there's a big difference if you're in ninth grade saying identify main idea and author's purpose of Shakespeare and Romeo and Juliet or Green Eggs and Ham. You can still say you're teaching that standard. Do you say you're teaching that concept, but the type of text that students are interacting, if you don't believe they can handle complex text, and that's why it was really important when we updated our ELA standards and we're building out the supportive documents to make sure that we're giving examples of the types of text at each grade level that should be used that represent multiple different genres, that represent different literary periods, that represent um, poetry and, and the type of reading and um, complexity that you would expect students to be able to handle at that grade level and to be able to get into uh, a Socratic seminar and a debate and um, be able to pull from those texts and cite examples and then use that to, to demonstrate multiple points of views or argumentative writing. And um, that's one of the things I think as we work with schools and we work with teachers, especially with this, the implementation of our standards, is having that robust conversation, conversation that text matters, especially when you get into high school. And um, that, that makes a big difference. I don't know if that was Absolutely. Fair. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Well, Ms. Smith, did you have something to say? Oh, you know, I always have something. Okay. <laughs> um, one of the things I just want to, this district has been under state authority now for, for several years, but they've been under state authority for different reasons. Okay, so their timeline's a little bit different than other folks. But one thing I wanted to note is when, when the state first went into Lee County, um, when we talk about takeovers, we talk about system failure on multiple levels, all right? So just by physical bathrooms without stalled doors, doors hanging off, wasn't even quality places for a student to go and use the restroom. That's not the case anymore. Library um, at the elementary school did not look like a library. Literally just had, and Mr. Stone, Dr. Stone was not there at the time. He's, he's come in and helped us fix all this. 
but didn't even have books that were really accessible for students to access. They were just kind of all shoved in a back room. Um, didn't look like an elementary library at all. The high school, same thing. Um, lots of, they had more books at the high school, but they were all protected in lock and key in a back room. Um, and so getting they're, those. They're out now. They're out now, yeah. absolutely. Um, you could see the, the remnants of what used to be a really robust CTE program that had just decayed over the years, and you had empty buildings and loss of students. Um, those things are all shifting. Um, when the the pre-K program was a huge drive, especially in the last couple of years, about increasing the quality there, making sure that they had quality curriculum, and you are seeing data as students are rolling into kindergarten, first grade, that had been in that program. Um, huge emphasis from the state, working specifically at the elementary level, um, with a lot of coaching with rise in the science of reading and curriculum. Um, if those of you that were on the board, you, you'll remember when Car we actually sent Carly's team in. It's the first place we called it the Lee County Project. And we went in with her team and they went teacher by teacher to figure out how we could get teachers licensed. Um, and we went from having like majority unlicensed teachers to now where there's only a few and that they're on pathways and folks that we're working with. So there has been tremendous change um, throughout the district. Um, I've shared this story with you before about Dr. Stone reaching out to the private school um, in, in the district and his band actually going to their pep rally and playing to celebrate their kids winning, um, going to a football championship. And that private school has in turn done the same. They've done some joint community plays together. Um, so we're talking about healing in a community. We're talking about partnerships. We're talking about CTE partnerships, brought in a barber school for his area where you've got kids actually you, you go in there and you go get your hair you can go get your own hair done we'll make an appointment in fact lee next next month next week um so there are things happening um that it's never an overnight fix um but when i look back to what it was to what it is now there's so much potential and dr stone is leading that work and he's done a great job um he is this is his home grandma still lives there right Mom still lives there, and this is his home. This is where he graduated from, and so there's, it, it means something to him, and he's done a great job, and we appreciate the work and the hours because it's not easy. Thank you. Yeah. Also, I, because it is your home, I am terribly impressed with the fact that you are willing to let the data lead you where you're, where it seems, lead you uh, where you're going, rather than holding on to, you know, ghosts of the past. Of, you know, I'm sure whenever you graduated from there, the school was not like it is today. You, 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 know, you are a product of that, and. Um, so letting go of the past and letting the data lead you where you need to go is, has to be personally difficult for you. Um, I kind of uh, identify with that a little bit. I am a product of Pine Bluff High School. And so sometimes it is hard for me to understand how it got in the shape that it's in. So um, anyway, I just wanna say thank you and um, keep doing what you're doing. Well, I appreciate that, thank you. I have just some comments. Um, one thing I'm really excited about is that you guys have become the affiliate for the um, for Dolly Parton's Imagination Library. I serve on the Arkansas board for the Arkansas Innovation, I mean, the yeah, Imagination Library. And um, we actually spoke about the area and how can we engage these school districts, and so I'm so excited to hear that. Um, I also am a huge fan of the Launchpad system. Alicia Atwood and her team are doing a phenomenal job, and I'm so glad to hear that you're already seeing the product of their work, the outcomes. So I'm interested to see those third grade reading levels when those babies that you've had go through up to third grade, and even comparing, um, you know, if you are interested in doing some of that longitudinal data, data and looking at how do they compare later down the road, those that have been with you versus those that came from somewhere else. Um, 
And then the gamification, the level up, I love that. And we were just talking about how kids are coming to us differently than they did before. They're um, definitely instant gratification is something that they're used to. They've definitely been on devices more. And you can either sit around and complain about it or you can evolve and lean into it. And it sounds like that's what y'all are doing. So I'm excited about that. And um, last but not least, I'm coming to see y'all soon. So I'm super excited to get to see all these things in person and um, look forward to seeing you soon. Thank I you for coming. I look forward to it. <laughs> right. Awesome. Mr. Bragg, yeah. I want to echo the comments about the Dolly Parton Imagination Library. I, thought, I think that's going to be, you're going to see some long-term benefits for that. Are you having to finance that through your budget or are you having community support? One, one, of, one of the, um, they, they stated that it, it'll cost anywhere in the neighborhood of $3,000 to $4,000. And reaching out with our parents uh, through our title programs, we, we can handle that. Uh, we, we do have uh, the Rotary Club did give us a check last Monday uh, to, to help support that uh, because we are, we are the affiliate for it, uh, but it, it's not that much, but we are having some supports from Rotary. Okay. Well, I, I commend you for partnering with that. So. All right. Thank you, sir. Dr. Stein, you know, you and I have known each other for quite some time, being that I'm, I'm in the North Laurel School District. But I had the chance to visit Lee County um, in December, and walking into the school, you feel like this electric energy of kids that just are so excited to be at school, and teachers and staff that are just excited about doing the work. And so I absolutely enjoy, loved and enjoyed my visit there and to see the work that you are doing because you can absolutely fill it in there. So I thank, thank you so much for that. Thank you. I look forward to your next visit. <laughs> yes, All I'll, right. I'll be back. All right. Well, that's great. You're a little visit. Miss Woods, questions? I wanted to ask about your, uh, your school calendar. I know y'all started due to July start date this year. Was that correct? Uh, yes, ma'am. And what that kind of looks like and has meant for your community. Well, uh, it was it was a year-round calendar before I got there, and and so we've surveyed in the last couple of years. Um, would would they like to move forward with the same uh, type of calendar? And I'm in the 70% yes range, uh, so the community is in very much support of uh, that type of calendar. How we utilize it, uh, though, is is we start our school. You know, we get the seven weeks in the summertime as the law allows. And then uh, we start with our instruction at, right away. We do a lot of our testing and all of that so that learning loss over the summer is minimized. Uh, so that's the kid effect to it. Uh, and then also the, the adult effect to it is that the uh, teachers, uh, they need breaks too. You know, they need to be able to step away and, and, and a, get a refresh and throughout the year. So we build that calendar uh, with Again, with the end in mind, you know, we've got seven weeks so of the summer, so we want to try to start at the same time each year, the, the third week in July. So we, we build it backwards and then throw those days in there for the teachers to be refreshed, the kids to be refreshed. And so it's, it's, it's had a positive impact on both kids and adults in our, in our system. That's good to hear. So you all will continue that this upcoming school year? Yes. Yes, we will. We've already surveyed for this year, and again, everyone is really uh, thrilled about continuing that, that process or that calendar. That's great. I also want to ask on CTE programs. I heard every minute of, you know, the, there used to be more robust CTE programs. Is that something that y'all been able to address yet and looking for partnerships in your area? Well, we, we've got a, we, we're starting back an automotive uh, program. Uh, we've got a CAD program uh, where uh, our kids are doing designs and things like that for architectural. Uh, we also have a carpenter program, program and a barbering program. So we are, we, we've got uh, programs going on in the district currently that are, that are uh, really good for our students at, according to student interest. So those, those are why the programs that we have, that's why those were selected. That's great. Are students able to do any concurrent credit courses at the high school? Yes, uh, we partner with EACC in Forest City, and we do have uh, students there going throughout. Uh, we, have, we, we transport twice a day, oh, and so they are doing uh, concurrent credit I with know, EACC. logistically that's hard, but that's good to hear that students are offered those yes. courses. 
Those are all my questions. Any more questions, comments, board members? Ms. Woods online. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Stone, for coming in today and okay. sharing with us. We thank you and appreciate the hard work you're doing. Thank you, and thank you all for allowing me, giving me this opportunity to share with you. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Up next, we have Ms. Lilla with the Watson Chapel School Districts, who I believe, are they on Zoom? Together. Just a couple more. Sheila Whitlow, Office of Coordinated Support and Service. And um, I, I really wanted to introduce a couple of the members of the of CSS team because we talk about the team a lot, but they're not able to be here. So we have two of uh, the coaches here today, and they're just going to love me for introducing them. But Dr. John West, yeah, he provides principal support, and uh, Dr. Michael Watson. And so Dr. Watson, I, I, would, I want to uh, brag on him because the RTI program that are, are the RTI team, especially in the behavior that they have at Lee County, uh, he has been very instrumental in getting that going. So just wanted to recognize the two of them today. Thank you. For Thank you all for coming in. And um, I, I want to say one more thing about Dr. Stone because everybody got to brag on him, so I want to, I want to share with you. One thing that he does, and, and not all superintendents do this, but he gets in the classrooms. So last week, he and I spent two days in those English classrooms. And, and guys, that was, that was um, helped us as we talk with the team about what we were seeing and not seeing. And, and so then he's, he's had several meetings with his ELA team and the coaches about, uh, they have a plan to improve. So um, I'm ready for uh, Watson Chapel. And we have, uh, I believe on with us in Zoom, uh, Dee Davis. And she's the assistant superintendent, and Tom Wilson, who's the superintendent. I want to make sure they're here because we, they will. She will pre present the data today. I see them both on. Can you all hear? Can us? you see them? I'm on somewhere. <laughs> Great, we can see you now. So I hope I know how I to push the right button. We'll see if I got this. Which one? This one? Right here? There it is. Okay. Thank you. So we'll start with security because if um, those of you that were with us and recall when we first went to, um, to Watson Chapel, we, we did do a security assessment and had some concerns. And many of those have been addressed. But as you see in our report, there are still some things that need to be addressed. So um, January 30th, Jerry, uh, Jerry Kiefer and Jason Weatherly went to Watson Chapel and did another assessment. And so you can see some of the things that they saw. And as you see, we still have some exterior doors that are open. And, and I also observed that this week when uh, Ms. Moore and I were on campus uh, for a site visit. Dr. Moore, Dr. Moore was with us, with me on site. Um, we also see interior doors that are unlocked. Uh, so, so those are areas that recommendations are to make sure that those are done. We, we wanna make sure that all of the exterior doors are locked at all times. Um, I, one, one other thing that I wanted to talk about here also is that we, we're still seeing some concerns about the duty uh, area during lunch at the high school. So I've talked to Mr. Wilson about that, about placing the duty. We had free duty teachers, but they are all standing together in one area and they did not have radios. So we're recommending radios as well when they're on duty during that lunchtime when the students are out, um, out and about. We were pleased to see that there are changes in the entrance to the buildings at the high school. They do have metal detectors up. They're using those. There are times though when it has been observed that the students go through the metal detector, it alarms, but then they just go on in. And that has been observed by uh, some of our, our team that, that are on campus there. So we have to be consistent with that and be consistent with those, those expectations when students are entering. We also have a policy for clear backpacks, but we're, seeing, we're not seeing all students with clear backpacks. I think, Mr. Wilson, did you, did you want to say something? 
I'd like to make a few comments here. Uh, we did uh, get some more clear backpacks in. I think they gave those out. There was a problem with bear, uh, the backpack tearing up. Uh, I guess kids would be throwing them on, on the uh, floor or whatever. And uh, so we did order more backpacks. We're going to order more. We're going to also look for a better backpack this uh, for next year uh, to see if we can't uh, uh, help that problem out. I would also like to tell the state board that uh, my director of safety and security did resign a week and a half ago. I am interviewing uh, at present time for that position. I'm going to change the uh, the uh, job description somewhat. Uh, I feel like the director of safety and security should be uh, in charge of all our security guards where they're stationed, and not only that, but work with the principal on stationing uh, any duty teachers and where they should be, and for the total safety of, of each school in our district. Uh, so I am uh, putting together that job description and hopefully we'll be able to, to uh, maintain consistency. I did meet with the uh, junior high faculty uh, yesterday afternoon. Uh, I was invited over and uh, I did talk to them about every day should be a normal school day. You know, every day should be a normal day. Everybody doing their job and that's being consistent with what we're doing. There has to be checks and balances. Everyone, security guards, principals, dean students, system principal, we need to walk around. We need to check to make sure those doors are locked. And some of our doors, a kid may kick the door or something one day and there it won't close all the way. And that's why some of those doors. But I, I do have uh, my maintenance supervisor, uh, he's here, Mr. Hayden, and okay. he told me that there is a list uh, you know, as soon as it's reported that a lock or a door is messed up, it's sent to him and he does contact the locksmith to come out or whoever is necessary. Okay. So we are taking care of those things. It is an ongoing process. And we, want, yes. Yes, and we, we have communicated all the, the changes that need to be made. We'll move on to the next two updates for dyslexia and special education. Remember last month I shared with you that we were going to be adding some staff or needed to add some staff in this particularly one special classroom that needed additional people and we were we uh, the district has hired two parapros and we have observed those classrooms since that classroom since those parapros have been uh, added and we are seeing a safer environment and more orderly environment for the uh, dyslexia we're still waiting for an additional some additional interventionists because that there is a need you see that we're still we have 70 students that are still needing that level two screener and we have some students that are, are ready for placement but they just they don't have the personnel so um, i believe the district is going to be uh, getting uh, advertising for inter interventionist and adding some interventionists to that and mm -hmm. The next slide, please. Sorry. So uh, you know, you also know that when we came in, uh, master schedule was actually the reason we visit, went to the school initially because they were four weeks in with uh, without students having the, uh, re their schedules and concerns about the master schedule and staffing. So uh, we're working on master schedule now. Uh, educator effectiveness had a master scheduling face to face trainings, five regional trainings around the state, and Watson Chapel did participate when we were there in Arkansas River. So they're, they're beginning that initial work. What's left is that they need to do their staffing analysis, determine what staff they're gonna need, get, get to work on that, and then also looking at the student, the student course selections and the student specific student needs and placing them in the master schedule. So the goal is to have that ready before uh, the counselors leave for the summer. And then finally, principals. We know that we need strong principals in every building. Um, so we're, we're making sure that we're providing support there and the district has uh, contracted with the Bailey Group. They are gonna be providing some support, direct support for the building principals. Arkansas River Co-op is also providing someone and then and our team has someone that goes in and works with one of the elementary principals. So the principals are getting the support they need. We're gonna collaborate, you know, we're gonna work together, all, all of us, to coordinate that service to make sure that we're building strong building leaders. Any questions from from you before we move on? Miss Miss, okay. 
Uh, yeah, I have a question for uh, Mr. Wilson. You mentioned that, um, I'm not seeing him right now, but uh, there we go. You mentioned that the Director of Safety and Security resigned last week. I was curious if you did an exit interview with him and if you um, determined the reason that he left, if there was something that could be adjusted or any improvements that could be made. Well, actually, uh, he did resign. He went with the state police, and uh, he had been he had been there three or four three or four years, I guess. Uh, he handled a lot of stuff at the school, and he went through the shooting when it happened and all that. And I think he had been uh, uh, interviewing or trying to get in with state police for uh, probably the last year. Uh, so he wanted to go to work with state police, and that's what he did. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. More questions, board members. Well, so I mean, I'm sorry. Just to just to follow up on that question, I think uh, Ms. Keener asked specifically if there was an exit interview. Yeah. W it, was there an exit interview or not? You are. Was there an exit interview? Oh, um, really? He told me where he was going, and uh, that was kind of the end of the conversation. But he, he just resigned like a week and a half ago, and I knew about this. He told me over the summer he was trying to get in with the state police, and I said, well, that sounds, that sounds good if that's what you want to know, but I need to have a resignation if you know when you're going to be hired by them. And he, he gave it to me about um, maybe two weeks ago. Thank you. So that was really the only exit interview. He got another job, and uh, he left us. Now I'm interviewing for a position and working on the job description. I do have a question, if you don't mind. Um, I appreciate, Mr. Wilson, you and your district for allowing me to visit with Ms. Whitlow this week. It was great to see a lot of, of teachers and, and students uh, working hard. As you just provided with the dyslexia and special education update, it sounds like you have um, some issues with fully, fully covering all students because of lack of staffing. Is that something that you're gonna be able to hire more for this school year or aggressively recruit for the upcoming school year? Yes, and, I, and I, let me say this. Um, Dee has been working real close with dyslexia, and we we know we need uh, to hire more interventionists for dyslexia. We, we're uh, approving one position Monday night um, for another pair pro. Of course, we're hiring, hiring that, or not hiring, but uh, also uh, getting approval from the board to hire a designated for a special ed program. It seems like those are two problems that are are really um, important. We got to get to them. We got to help the kids to have a problem, and, and that's what we're we're trying to do. Uh, Miss D, she's on. She may want to uh, make a few comments about it. Okay. Um, Mr. Wilson, I'm sorry. Good morning. Um, Dyslexia is a critical area and we are, um, we do have some partners, uh, partner programs like our ALE and our focus academies, um, as well as our, uh, we only have, <clears throat> excuse me, currently three interventionists and they are full. Their schedules are full. So we um, are posting after Monday night for an itinerant dyslexia interventionist who can travel to those outlying partners and then within the district, but that's not going to solve um, the whole situation. We do need more. So as soon as um, we can get those posted Monday, well, be Tuesday morning, my plan would be for Tuesday morning to hire, be able to hire some additional dyslexia interventionists. As I'm sure you know, in the middle of the school year, it is hard to find. Um, People, I do think my coordinator has had some people who have reached out to her with interest. So I'm hoping that's a positive sign and that we are gonna be able to get those immediately. That's good, hey, thank Dr. you. Moore, could I follow up with a question? Yes. Ms. Davis, could you tell us about uh, how many students have y'all identified specifically in your dyslexia category and how are they doing with the Barton program? Um, so currently we have like 42 that are being served. Currently we have five that are ready for placement. Three of those, I believe, are the ones that are at the outlying facilities and then the other um, two being inside the district. We have that 70 plus um, that we still have, we've identified as, as having those characteristics of dyslexia. They need the level two screening. 
my coordinator is the only person currently able to give those level two screeners and it takes a little bit of time. Um, you also have to wait on teacher packets to return with that information and that documentation. You have to have parent permission to be able to screen those students and then parent permission back to um, place those students in services. Um, so they are currently, they get some of those services anyway through their win time. Um, however, we need that intensive pull out one-on-one -on -one or one to a really small group. So um, Barton, we are currently talking about the effectiveness of that program previously. Um, last year they did take flight, that takes a certified teacher. Those people left, um, so we have we don't have we we have trouble getting certified teachers in the classroom. So it's really hard to get those certified teachers to do the take flight. Although that's the way I would prefer to go. Um, so you do what you have to do to meet the needs. You know, no one program works for every kid. So hopefully, the plan would be to move in a direction that we could use both Barton and take flight. Um, I, my grandson has had, I've had personal experience with Barton and it worked for him. Um, but there are those kids that may not work for. So, um, you know, just trying to fill a lot of gaps, but meet kids where they are because one, one size shoe doesn't fit everybody. So moving in that direction, but it's a slow process. No, I understand and I appreciate that. My daughter is dyslexic and I've done a lot of research recently into dyslexia and she's doing take flight four days a week. Okay. But I was curious okay. just how Barton was doing for your students and whether y'all had looked into other programs. So, but I do understand this. And that is, piece. yeah, and that is something that the coordinator and I have been, uh, even in written this week, talked about that as we, uh, when she meets, she meets, she has a CTM or a PLC with her dyslexia interventionist weekly during that um, Wednesday early re release time. And so I t I, we've talked about the next thing they need to be talking about is how do we evaluate the effectiveness of that program? Because you have to know whether to keep doing it, whether to stop doing it, whether we need to add something else and the only way to do that. And, and Barton does have some of its own progress monitoring, mm -hmm. but we really need to hone in on that data to, to evaluate the effectiveness of the program as a whole. Thanks for that. Appreciate it. Uh -huh. Board members, more questions at this point? Okay. Okay. So, uh, just wanted to add, we we do have data here from all of the schools from their star testing um, that was requested last month. Would you like for them to present it, or uh, you all have copies of it? Or do you have any questions about uh, the testing results? from the STAR reading. Is the STAR reading the sole assessment given for, um, is that the one that's given at the beginning, the middle, and the end of the year? Mm -hmm. And do are, the diagnostic reports, is, are those used for planning <clears throat> instruction? Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yes, yes. D, did you, did you hear that question? Are you, uh, the diagnostic assessment, when you get the results from the assessments, are those discussed with the teachers and are those used to, to direct the planning for lessons? Yeah. Yes, those among many other things. So we do star testing as our sort of formal, mm -hmm. I guess you could call it, interim assessment. So we do use that K-12, um, even though it is the state's K-2. Uh, formal assessment. We also use it K-12. However, we also have an assessment schedule that um, we have all the other diagnostics, especially in K-2 that are required by law. Mm -hmm. um, we use many of those same things, K-12, because we have so many kids at upper levels who are still um, struggling with those foundational skills. So we do do an oral reading fluency. We do um, a DSA, which is a spelling assessment, but has so many other um, things, inf pieces of information that it can give you um, besides just the spelling test. So we do um, several different things. All of that is kept in a data warehouse and it is reviewed regularly with teacher teams during their uh, CTM time to uh, plan forward 
um, they not only do the do they do those things those three formal times fall winter and spring they do also do progress monitoring in between mm -hmm. additionally they have their win um, intervention time and that there's also prog every three weeks there's progress monitoring with that mm -hmm. the challenge is we have a lot of data and many times we do know and we understand the data but i think the, the gap and the challenge is what exactly do we do now that we know what this says yes i know my kids are low but where are exactly are they low and then what do i do about that how do i fill that gap how do i fix that how do i intervene so that's a challenge and just really trying to provide extra support with those specific consultants that come in like 95 percent group those consultants come in the ones that the state provides through the co-ops and through the state department those people are in our buildings four days a week and they are really also working with those teams and the one instructional facilitator that we have to really um, dig deep into the data and understand not only what it says, but how, what are the implications for me, for my classroom, for my building, for my district, and how do I address that effectively to make positive progress? Thank, thank you, Dee. Um, this is Stacy. So one thing I just wanna comment to the board is the, the role of the coaching that you're seeing um, that is a shift in even how we're providing professional learning, um, professional development for teachers. It's more about getting that direct coaching to um, classrooms, how to use your data, what do you do next, um, how do you work with your professional team to determine next steps, looking at data as a whole. Um, so you're seeing a shift even statewide in, in the terms of um, coaching practices and what that looks like. Um, before, a lot of times when you have literacy or math coaches that are district-wide, a lot of times they're doing curriculum work, they're writing lessons, um, they're doing a lot of crunching data and numbers, but they're not necessarily directly working with teachers. And so this shift in the way that we're doing instructional coaches right now, um, we think is, is, is critical, and that's some of the work that you actually see happening in Watson Chapel. Earlier today, when Dr. Stone kept saying DNTP, that is the instructional coaching component piece that they're coming in, and those are those literacy coaches that the state is providing. Okay, so thank you. And then a second question I have just for the board is, Watson Chapel monthly report, are y'all still wanting a monthly report from Sheila to the board? Are you ready to move to every other or written reports, or is this what you continue to want to do? I'd definitely like to continue the monthly. Um, I don't know how anybody else feels. Then we will continue to do it. I just wanted to check in. One thing I do want to add about the interventions, we also had the opportunity to go in and observe during wind time, Dr. Moore and I did. And what we learned at the elementary is they, they are doing skills-based interventions. So the students were grouped and went to different teachers based on their skill deficit. So, and they're beginning the implementation of 95% group. They've just gotten it, so they're, they're learning right now and getting coaching from an, a 95% group coach that's coming on site. Is that, it feels like a lot of third parties that are coming in, do they, are they all have the same, you know, mm -hmm. I guess path? I'm, mm -hmm. I'm afraid we've got too many cooks in the kitchen, I guess is my concern. <laughs> so some of the coaches uh, in, 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 the, in the, any of the districts that we work with, some of the coaches work directly with those instructional support coaches and they're growing them because we want to have sustainability. They're not always gonna be there. And then you have those coaches that are focusing on teachers and going into the classrooms and supporting the teachers. So it's the role of the district leadership to help coordinate that, to make sure they don't run over each other. That was why I spoke earlier about the coach, um, the support from Bailey Group, our team, and, and the co-op. We're gonna meet together to make sure we're all saying the same thing and we're we're leading that work and supporting together and the name of the office that sheila leads is the office of coordinated support and service and so part of that is directly what you said when we go into schools a lot of times that are struggling um, one because they are at risk schools then they pretty much qualify for every grant program initiative that we have 
And a lot of times you'll go into these districts and you'll see they have every grant we're offering here at the department. Mm -hmm. They have every grant from the federal and there's just, mm -hmm. they can't keep up with it. Mm -hmm. And so part of their role when they're going in is one to identify what needs to go away um, what services are we bringing in and ensuring that we're matching that up and assisting the district in making those decision points? Um, because you can do too much where you're actually getting no progress and it's just it's right. just chaos. So well, it was a good question. Those poor teachers, the, the initiative fatigue, right. I can imagine they're like, could y'all just let me do my job? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, principals are the same way. way. So, so any, if like there are no more questions. Uh, I just have a quick Jaylen. question. Mm -hmm. uh, so I noticed that this, the percentage of the student population that was tested uh, in the upper grades was significantly lower than the lower grades. So mm -hmm. is that an attendance issue? Could we speak a little bit to that? So Dee shared with me yesterday that the junior high actually got the rest of theirs updated. I cannot speak to the high school to tell you why those are low. Um, Sheila? Yes. I don't know if you can, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. We can. Okay, okay, uh, just just an update um, on that. The, the, the high school has moved from the 86% you see on the slide to having 92% now, still not the 95, but they've gotten uh, some of the more of theirs tested. The junior high actually has gotten 99% of their students tested. I think there was like three kids that have not tested now, um, and both of the elementaries are um, either at or over their 95%. So um, those there has been some updates on the, the, the percentage of students tested. We are talking about currently met this week to talk about what's your plan to, um, to uh, make sure that 95% of your kids are tested for the winter, I mean the spring assessment and then for the summative assessment so even just thinking outside the box do i need to split all the kids up and make phone calls home can i put an advertisement in the local newspaper to make sure everybody's aware so i think there are some attendance issues and i think part of it is um that our families may not know that it's testing time and that hey we really we really need your students here with us to test. And if you have challenges, how can we help? What can we do to maybe um, provide some extra time for you to come up here? Do I, I'll stay an extra hour if you'll just bring them. Um, that sort of thing, how can we think outside the box to do that? Also making sure that we're being really purposeful and meaningful with our small group instruction, with our wind time to um, move the percentages in a more positive manner. I think when you see the data and the numbers, we're going in the right direction. It's just not enough. It's just not fast enough. We need more. And so what can we do to get the more to make sure our students are um, filling, we are, that we are filling those gaps and that our students are making positive progress towards um, increased achievement. One other follow-on question to that. Thank you for that information. But so as, so what we have in our packet does show growth uh, for, for the students. So now that more have been tested, are you still maintaining that level of growth or have those that have come in later, you know, impacted that, that growth chart? Um, the additional students tested did impact it a little bit, uh, again, also in a more, in a positive manner, but it's still really, it's still really low, low. Understood. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, board members. More questions? Ms. Woods online, more questions? Okay. To wrap it up, I just want to say when we visited, we did see teachers of teaching. They're uh, using their high quality instructional material in those core areas. In a, we saw it in the ELA classrooms. We saw it in the reading classrooms. Now it's professional learning and coaching and supporting them to really do a good job with the implementation. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, with that, board reports.
is important and there's one in. So I'll, give a, I'll give a brief report uh, to uh, the rest of the board uh, with regard to the accountability committee. We've met twice since um, since our last state board regular business meeting. And the first couple of meetings and probably even the next one have been focused on learning um, several, several uh, uh, things with regard to how, how schools receive their letter grades, um, how, how they receive their various levels of support from the department, and, and also we spent a lot of time yesterday learning about all the reports that schools and districts submit to the department, what information the department has, and we're kind of in the process of building our, uh, we're, we're, we're trying to develop a one or two page just succinct synopsis of where the schools are with you know, specific data that the department already has. So um, we haven't really got, gotten into the meat of uh, reaching out to schools and districts yet, but we envision that happening in you know, just the not too distant future, we're just doing a lot of groundwork right now to have a, a firm foundation to start with. Thank you. Board members, any more reports at this time? Ms. Woods? Okay, then we'll move on to Ms. Salam. Hello, everyone. So this is my February 2024 state board report. It's a, um, it's a little thin this month because of the inclement weather that we had in central Arkansas, which took away several <laughs> of my scheduled um, events because of that. So you all will, you will see that reflected. So. My first um, highlight was actually CTE Day at the State Capitol, which was February 1st, uh, and I had the opportunity to connect with Bo McCaslin, the 2024 Arkansas Teacher of the Year, as his students participated in the showcase there. And I'm always impressed by the professionalism and passion of his students. In fact, the rotunda was filled with students from all over the state showcasing their amazing programs. And I saw a couple of our board members as well as we were able to talk to the students and just get a feel for all the great things that they're doing here in the state. Um, I, I'm always so impressed by our students and the abilities that they have and the fact that they will be going out into careers here shortly or college, their next step. So I love talking with them. In fact, I met one of Bo's students in the fall uh, during the announcement and she and I had a chance to chat and we talked about her college choice and what she's gonna be doing in August since she's getting ready to graduate. So I was actually, uh, I received a phone call from the Martin Luther King Commission here in the state of Arkansas that they actually wanted to present uh, an award to me, uh, the 2024 MLK Our Beloved Community Award that I was one of their recipients. Um, being a toy, I've had the opportunity to su support the commission and as a history teacher, I'm always impressed with the work that they do here in the state. Uh, unfortunately, because of the inclement weather, the, the ceremony was canceled, but I'm always grateful for their recognition and I'm just always impressed uh, what Director Scarborough and his team is able to do. Uh, they have so many things lined up for the month of February, so I'll be reporting those things next month. And yesterday, I was actually at the co-op for uh, Wilbur D. Mills. Um, I was there to speak to novice teachers about the, my platform leading from the classroom and just engagement strategies. I love being able to provide support and answer questions for new educators because of their alternative pathway and being that I was also a teacher um, who took an alternative pathway with the MAT program. I love being able to just be able to provide that support because I remember what my first three years were like in the classroom. In fact, I made the transition from third grade to eighth grade within my first three years. So being able to speak with them um, and just encourage them to stay committed and then look for some professional growth opportunities as they continue to grow and master their craft. And then of course, I love including an educator spotlight. So I wanted to highlight Ms. Alfred. She's at Booker T. Washington Elementary. And as I, you all remember, I did the pinning ceremony at Arkansas Tech back in December where she was a graduate. 
And so in January, she started her first job here in Little Rock, and I promised that I would visit her classroom. So I actually took her um, some Starbucks and a t-shirt <laughs> to just check on her, and I spent a couple of hours in her classroom. She was like, will you give me some feedback? And so we talked about just routines and procedures because she has students kindergarten and fifth grade, so I actually got a chance to participate in their music day with them. And I just love being able to support our new teachers and check in with them and spend time uh, with some amazing children along the way. So that brings me so much joy. And I, I, that's one of my favorite parts about being a tour is getting in the classroom with our teachers and with our students from across the state. So that's all I have for this month. That's awesome that you were able to visit her. You just down the street, that's great. Yes. I think Starbucks always helps in the middle of the day. Yeah, totally. <laughs> so she she hugged me and she was they said, You have a visitor. She was like, Oh my gosh, she really came to see me. <laughs> so I love being able to follow up and keep my promises to my to my teachers. So I love that. That's really great. That novice teacher that you went to, is that for just non traditional teachers or is it all first year teachers? Actually, yes, there were some uh, traditional teachers in there, but they were in there, you know, first three years. Okay. And I always talk to them about how you have it. You already have your your life so together that you knew exactly that education yeah. was for you. And so, I, mean, I can't imagine being 22, 23 years old already starting my career, and they're just so grounded, and that just always inspires me. And just I want to continue for them to continue their growth, whether that's seeking out, you know. Uh, a master's degree or adding on to their license, talking to them about uh, lead and master teacher designation, just letting them know that there are so many opportunities for them to continue learning. That's awesome. Awesome. Board members, any questions, comments? Great, with that, do you have a report now or we're gonna break? Yeah, my, my report's gonna be quick. I am looking forward to the workshop on the learns update. It's mm -hmm. gonna well, let's go ahead and adjourn this meeting. We will begin, how much time, what do you think, for the work session? Uh, we probably need about 10, 15 Are we gonna move down there? Yeah, we're gonna reset the room. Yeah, so let's, let's aim for 10, 50, 10, 50 ish, 10, 55 to get back for that. Great, thank you all. <laughs>